Films TV præsenteres i samarbejde med Solid. My name is Stephen Hawking. Huge fan. Huge fan. I am a cosmologist, which means I study the entire universe. Kepler, Galileo, Newton. Yeah. We got one right here. It's fantastic. Amazing. Stephen Hawking er et af de største genier i menneskehedens historie. En fysiker med speciale i sorte huller og samtidig et vaskeægte kulturfænomen, som har optrådt overalt i verden og sågar i tv-serier som Star Trek og The Simpsons. Hawkings livshistorie er historien om en mand, der har inspireret talløse mennesker til at se på omverdenen i et nyt lys, og det er samtidig en utrolig livsbekræftende historie om en mands ukulige viljestyrke. For blot som 22-årig blev Hawking diagnostiseret med den sjældne nervesvækkende sygdom ALS, og lægerne mente endda, at han ville dø inden for to år. Men Hawking har bekæmpet sygdommen med oprejst pande lige siden, og i år kunne han fejre sin 71-års fødselsdag. Det er jo intet mindre end fantastisk, og derfor giver det også sig selv, at der nu er blevet lavet en dokumentar om Hawkings liv, og den bliver vist på årets Copenhagen Dogs Film Festival. Og der taler man både bevægende og inspirerende film, som sobert og sandfærdigt gennemgår Hawkings personlige triumfer og nederlag, og hvor den larmede Hawking guider os godt igennem sit eget liv med sin computerskabte stemme. My name is Stephen Hawking. This film is a personal journey through my life. Oh, he was great fun. He was eccentric. Falling in love gave me something to live for. We were going to defy the disease and challenge the future. As he gradually lost the use of his hands, he further developed his unique ways of thinking. I have often been transported afar, lost inside my own thoughts. Og Films TV har mødt instruktøren Steven Finnegan, og den engelske dokumentarist var gudskelov nøjagtigt lige så åben og snaksagelig som det geni, han har fulgt med et filmkamera de seneste år. I thought he was going to be quite a stuffy, boring, academic uh, physicist. I didn't think there was going to be any other side to Steven, to be quite honest. I didn't know about his reputation of being very quick-witted and very funny. And that was a real surprise for me. And that was a really nice thing because, um, you know, Stephen Hawking is a really, really funny bloke. He's a very funny man to hang around. He cracks jokes. You get used to the fact that it's a, it takes him more time to communicate with you, but he tells jokes. He takes, he takes you know, he, what we say in the, in the UK, he takes the mickey out of people. So he kind of like, he rib tickles you and um, he's fun. So that was the main thing that I found was that he wasn't what I expected him to be. He's not a stuffy, boring physician. Um, he's a funny, interesting guy, and and that's kind of, in a sense, that's sort of Stephen's story. If if he's always wanted to communicate, I think to people that physics shouldn't be boring, shouldn't be dull, because it is our life. It affects our life so much, um, and I think you know he's found different ways, different channels of trying to make people think about the universe that we live in. So if that was his kind of mission, I would say that. For me personally, my mission was to make people look at a film and think, wow, I didn't really know that about Stephen Hawking. You kind of don't want to get it wrong, you know? And I, when, I, when I was offered to do the film, um, my, dad, my father's uh, probably knew more about Stephen Hawking than I did then. He's like quite a big, got a lot of interest in him. And he was almost like, you know, don't mess this up because he's a really important person. So there is that kind of weight of responsibility. When you're making somebody, a film about somebody who is as big, as important as Stephen, you kind of want to get it right. You want to get it right. So you want to get the right tone, you want to get the right images, you want to get the right, the right way of, of putting a man's story on the screen that people are going to feel is different. You know, if we'd made a straight drama, it would have been good, but it would have been a different take. If we'd have made a straight documentary with no drama, it would have been different again. If, if Stephen hadn't have narrated the film himself, then that would have been a, a slightly more third person, more removed documentary. But I think the fact that he narrates it um, draws you in a little bit more because you want to hear what this guy is going to tell you next. Um, so yeah, it, there, was a, there was a big responsibility to get it right. Um, so fingers crossed um, we got it right. Yeah. How, how has this reaction been? Great. Um, the first time Stephen saw the first rough cut uh, was last Christmas because we finished the film last March now, um, and that was quite daunting. We sat and watched it in his office in Cambridge. Uh, he kind of sat in front of us, in front of the big screen, 
and um, you know he didn't make a peep throughout the whole 90 minutes and then it finished and we kind of I kind of looked round and um, his, his face was beautifully lit by the TV and there was a tear rolling down his cheek which was really sweet um, and then we kind of we put the lights on and we went through into his other room and sat and uh, he made the comment that um, he really liked it but he, he wasn't sure that anybody else would which was very humble um, a man that probably thinks you know people aren't that would people be that interested in his personal life um, so yeah and I said I think they will be you know knowing people knowing what makes a person who they are is is what life's all about really I think when you meet someone when you meet me we chat we want to know what we're about where are you from what do you do where do you go it's that sort of stuff that is what people want to know about so yeah I, I think that's what people um, will get from the film but well, that's interesting what, what, what people will get from the film is Stephen Hawking himself thinking about would people be interested in this because obviously I, I, me being an astronomy nerd I, I really want to see this film but like what is your hope for like the average viewer to get the, the guy or the girl who maybe doesn't really know Stephen Hawking that they take from, from this scene? I hope that 75% of the people that go and see the movie aren't physics nuts they, they're just people that might know nothing about Stephen Hawking, but their partner says, let's go and see a film about Stephen Hawking. So I hope that, I really hope that people like that go, and I hope they get, they, um, somebody at a festival asked me to think of three words that best describe Stephen. And if I can remember them, I said, uh, determined. I think he's the most determined person I've probably met in my life. Um, inspirational. I think he's, you know, I, I found him inspirational throughout the making of the film, and I hope the film is really inspirational. Not just um, for people that uh, have family members with ALS, but just, just, just to kind of grit your teeth and carry on, I think, is also. So I hope people find it inspiring, and I hope people find it kind of funny. I hope people laugh, because, not all the way through, but there's, there's moments in the film where I want people to laugh, because it's a funny film, and he's a funny guy. Um, so I hope that, and I also think there's two other themes that come across in the film hugely. And, and one of them is the theme, is, is love. I think, I think the film's about a love affair. I think it's about Stephen Hawking's love affair with physics. I think it's about his love affair with his wife, his wives and his family. And I think it's about his love affair with fame and the good and the bad of fame, what it does to his life, really. So I think there's that. So I hope people take away, I hope people can try and get some of that in there. And I also think there's a, lo the, there's a theme of communication. And I think the more that Stephen has got ill and his, his ability to physically communicate, to talk, to get his message out, as it's got harder and harder and harder for him, I think he's become more and more determined to communicate. So when he can't, you know, when he actually almost really nearly dies when he's actually writing A Brief History of Mine, halfway through he gets pneumonia again, he nearly dies. He loses the ability to speak. He, you know, he really can't write with his hands anymore. He can't use his computer. You know, he, he comes back and he publishes a book which communicates to 10 million people. You know, his biggest ever form of communication comes when he's nearly died. And that kind of sums the guy up, really. The notion of fame is a curious thing to me. It was a very intense period. The whole family went to pieces. But because every day could be my last, I had a desire to make the most of each and every minute. He told me to get the spaceship built because he wasn't going to live forever. We are all different, but we share the same human spirit. Perhaps it is human nature that we adapt and survive. Husk, at du kan finde alle vores tidligere Films TV udsendelser på Films under Films TV fanebladet og også på videovideo.dk i iTunes og via vores gratis Video Video app.